in these unprecedented circumstances. Something that we've never seen before in history. Communities are calling this virus unprecedented. No, viruses have come and they've gone. The global reach of this virus is phenomenal. The entire world has come to a standstill. To think that there was one Namrud and a small mosquito born Namrud down. In the very same way, today you're seeing that this humanity that's full of arrogance has been brought down by something that can't even be seen. Know that there's a sunnah here. Sunnah of Allah is this. That when he wants to bring down somebody arrogant, he brings them down with something very small. He teaches them and he tells them and he shows the world it becomes an ibra, comes a lesson for the world. That if you are to stand up in the position of Allah, then Allah will humiliate you. And this is why you see that a man like Sayyidu Shuhada who Yazid thought was weak. But today, all across the world, from one end to the other end, today nobody remembers Yazid, but everyone remembers Hussein. And here Yazid was thinking that Hussein is finished. Little did he know that Allah was going to create a nation who was going to cry over Hussein. The power of these tears, that's what's unprecedented. Do you know how powerful your tears are? Your tears are so powerful that it shakes the arsh of Allah. This entire journey of Karbala is a journey of tears, a journey of realization. So look, today people are in their houses. Today you're doing majlis from your homes. Today you can't be one body physically as the hadith says, that become one body in mourn for Hussein. But look, there's a deeper philosophy if you look into it. Why after 1400 years has Allah made it like this? Only one thing comes to mind. If you've ever been to the zarih of Sayyidu Shuhada on the night of Qadr, that every single year with the blessings of Allah were there, you'll see that the last half an hour before Fajr, the entire room is full, Zarih room, and everyone standing there saying, Allahumma ajjil waliyak al-faraj. Any dua which is done under the dome of Imam Hussain becomes mustajab. You're praying for the coming of that Savior. So what does Allah do? He gives you an opportunity to accelerate the coming of that Savior. Why? As we mentioned yesterday, if every single family connects, on these nights, you can see that domino effect to accelerate the coming of the Savior. Because we're not able to enhance that wilaya, to channel that wilaya. But the minute you are, the whole journey is a journey of the heart. You can read as many books as you want. It won't take you to that maqam. What takes you to that maqam is your tears. Why? It humbles you. It destroys you. And it cleans your heart. Had it been for the fact that books could take you there, every academic today would have been able to go to that maqam. It's not the case. It's the movement of the heart. Why? Because the heart is the haram of Allah. Hadith says nothing can hold Allah but the heart of the believing servant. Your heart is that powerful. Understand it. But the heart gets tarnished. So Allah gives us this opportunity today. Look, do you think I like looking into a camera? If only we were all together. But the fact is we're not. But there's a secret behind that. Imagine that secret. Imagine when 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock comes or 9 o'clock comes. You're sitting there. On the floor. You've laid your cloth. Your screen is in front of you. 7 o'clock comes, 8 o'clock. Close your phones. Switch them off. Bring your family. Focus. Why? You know why it's important? I'll tell you why. For one reason only. 
the minute that you make the niyyah of Hussein's majlis, you will find the Zahra will come to all of our houses. And when Zahra comes, remember one thing. She's coming to your house. If you're on the phone, you've disrespected her. If you're talking, you've disrespected her. And when you disrespect her, you disrespect all of the aimah. Adab. There's no halal and haram in this. You can sit on your phone if you want to, but remember one thing. Be very vigilant. Adab is what takes you to the higher maqams. But let me tell you something. You know when you go to the ziyarah of Zahra alayhi salam, open up the book and see. You know what it says in there? It says, Salam on you, Um Mu'mineen. Ummul Mu'mineen. You think only a person whose blood related to Zahra can call her mother? All of those people who truly know how to shed tears for Imam Hussein can call her mother. Now imagine when you fall into problems and you say, Mother, come and help me. If an average mother can't take when her son falls onto the ground, how can that mother take it when one of her Shias are in trouble? She comes very fast to your help. She comes to you. She helps you. This is why, in fact, this COVID-19 era could be a blessing in disguise. When you're sitting at home and your heart is broken, and at that moment you say, Zahra, what better mother than you to come and help us? I think Zahra salam, doesn't come to your help? Today, I didn't elaborate on it. I'm going to elaborate on it today. Remember I said yesterday, Laylatul Qadr is actually secondary for you. Actually, it's for the Imam. Better than a thousand months, better than a lifetime. But how does one connect to Laylatul Qadr, which is important? You connect, you gain ma'rif of, and remember, to gain ma'rif of Laylatul Qadr is to gain ma'rif of Zahra alayhi salam. How do you do that though? What's the purpose of that? Look, Allah's da'imul faith, continuously He's giving faith. Why is it that it doesn't reach you because of your sins? When does it reach you? When Hujjatullah is praying and you connect onto that prayer. Tahajjud, for example, last one third of the night. Dua is accepted the fastest then. Why? Your Imam is praying. When you come to the majlis of Imam Hussein, when the Masaib, the Musibas, when Imam is crying. What happens then? Laylatul Qadr. It's not just about staying awake. It's about that moment when the heart connects to the hujjah and then everything is accepted. Ma'arifah increases. So what is this? Majlis is that thing that brings together all of the aimah in any of this one hour, 45 minutes, whatever it may be. At any stage, if the heart connects as the lutf of the imam, your ma'arifah increases. When your ma'arifah increases, you become a different person when you go outside. When we say Rasulullah is khatim in nabiyin, like this is a khatim. This is a stamp. Let's say it's got writing on it. In America, you won't find this very much because you're a modern society only two, three hundred years old. Those places where there's kingship, for example, like we are here in the United Kingdom, when the queen seals something, she does khatim, stamps it. That means that it's sealed. Rasulullah is that seal that stamps it. It means it's legitimate now. I can write a whole document without the seal it doesn't become legitimate. In this country, when the queen puts her stamp to it, it means it's legitimate. Every law from parliament has to go to the queen. She stamps it, it becomes legitimate. Rasulullah is that stamp that initiates to say that the Rasalat of all of the prophets is legitimate. But in Ghadir, it tells us something that the ink Rasulullah uses to stamp is known as Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why? The certain conditions for wilayah to become perfect, otherwise Allah will chuck you out from the basis of wilayah. You know what one of them is? Let me tell you this. Somebody comes to Ayatollah Bahjad once. They say, Allah, oh, give us a dhikr. We're in problems. What's the best dhikr to do? He looks up, he says, Dhikr amali. Go and do amal. Go and do good. Help people. 
more than just sitting in a cave reciting Allah. Allah is to go and help people. Why? Bala is removed when you help people. Many a time you think your solution lies in reciting a dhikr. No, actually it lies when you go and help somebody, when you feed somebody, when you educate somebody. But I'll give you one. And if this one you can do, inshallah, slowly all of the others will open up. What is that one? This one, famously known as the golden rule. What you want for yourself, want for your brother. You know what that means? If you don't like people gossiping about you, don't gossip about somebody else. Be vigilant and careful. Perhaps the reason why we're all at home today is because when we come to the masjid, afterwards when we sit together, ilm rajal happens and you gossip to such an extent that you lose everything. You've come into the masjid to gain something. And what happened? Your fishara qabr increases when you die. See, this is what tawfiq is. Tawfiq is there. Don't lose that tawfiq. What you want for your brother. Don't cheat somebody if you don't want to be cheated. Don't look at somebody's spouse if you don't want anybody to look at your spouse. What does it mean? Do for other people that you want for yourself. That's one condition of wilaya. And if you don't have that condition, you're out of the wilaya. Look, you want people to give you a chance, give other people a chance. You want people to forgive you, learn to forgive people. That's one of seven. Imagine if we were to mention all seven. Inshallah, maybe in the next coming nights we will digest this for tonight. Go home and change yourself. Come back slowly so we can change. It gives us all a chance, including myself. It gives us all a chance in this Muharram to change. And if you can even do this one thing, then I guarantee you that the whore is close. He says, repent. Change. Even that small thing that you say to your family that breaks a heart, you're removed from the wilaya because they're Shia of Ahl Bayt. Be careful. Your wife, your husband. Sometimes we take it for granted. We say things to our children. We say things to our parents. We say things to our spouses. Be careful. You say things to a Shia. The minute your lehen becomes such that it's offensive and you break somebody's heart, be very careful because at that moment you're out of the wilaya. And then you think to yourself, why don't I have marif of Ahlul Bayt? It's not easy to have marif of Ahlul Bayt. Hadith says in and of itself, Akhbar of Ali Muhammad is such, truly such. One day somebody comes to Imam Hussein, says, Mawla, tell us your haqqaiq. He says, you won't be able to take it. He says, please tell me. Imam begins to open his mouth to speak. The person's beard went white, his hair went white. Imam stopped. That person forgot everything. Imam said, may the mercy of Allah be on you that you forgot everything. You wouldn't be able to take it. Why? Requires something more. Heart needs to be pure. For your heart to be pure, remember. So you can ask me the question, what has Wilaya got to do with the brother, your brothers? No. The entire Shia nation is like a body. Be very vigilant to your fellow Shia brother. Look, I don't want to go on too much about this. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll continue the discussion further. If only we can take one thing home today. It's just that. Become true Shias of Ahlul Bayt. Why? Remember one thing. Ahlul Bayt's heart is very soft to you. Very soft to you. Shall I give you a story? Sometimes I think to myself, how giving a Ahlul Bayt to their enemies, let alone their friends. Look, I've given the story before. But I want to give it again. Every time that I repeat this, it hurt, affects my heart, hurts my heart. One year after Karbala takes place, Yazid sends an army of a hundred thousand. He says, go and pillage Mecca and Medina. In seven days in Medina, one thousand illegitimate children are born. Rasulullah's mosque is demolished. But he says something. He says, look, whatever you do, don't touch the house of Zain al-Abideen. At this moment, they say Marwan, who is the Hakim, 
becomes very worried. He says to his servant, he says, look, I've got women, I've got children, I've got elders. These Yazidis are not going to tell between an Umawi and a non-Umawi. When 100,000 of them come, they're going to pillage everything. What should we do? So at that moment, his servant says, why don't you go to Ali ibn al Hussein?" He says, but I killed his father. He says, you don't know who Ahl al-Bayt are. Go to them. Go to them and see what he says. They say, Marwan comes to the door of Imam Zain al but he knocks on the door. Your gharib Imam gets up. If a person in his heart knows what sham symbolizes, how difficult it is for that person to come face to face with his father's killer. They say, Imam Zain al Abidin comes to the door, opens the door, his head is down. He said, what do you want? He says, do you recognize me? He says, of course I recognize you. What do you want? He says, Yazid is sending an army. Zain al Abidin. I also have a Zainab at home. I also have a Sakina at home. But you know what? This is now in my words. I also have an Ali Yaskhar at home. I also have a Qasim at home. I also have Aun and Muhammad at home. I also have Habib ibn Mudahir at home. I have elderly people. I have children. I have a wife. I have aunts. I have everything. Zain al Abidin, what should I do? You know what Imam says? He says, give them to me. I'll protect them. They say, for one moment, tears come into this Mal'oom's eyes. He says, can I ask you a question? He says, what's that question? He says, when we were in power, we oppressed you. Now that you're in power, you're showing us so much mercy? You know what Imam Zain al Abidin replied? Tears in his eyes came, and he just said one thing. He said, Marwan knows something. The difference between you and us is this. Your mother is Hind, our mother is Zahra. If they're so merciful to their enemies, Shias of Hussein, for one second, think where you're sitting. You're sitting in the majlis of Imam Hussein. You're sitting in the majlis of Imam Hussein. This is the time of istijabat of dua. You think if you raise your hands, Allah is not going to accept it? Let me tell you one more thing. Let me tell you one more thing. Look, we can't get to Karbala 